Shalom and blessings to you. I'm Reverend Clifton McDowell Sr. I'm the pastor of the Church of God of East New York, located in the heart of Brooklyn, the East New York section of Brooklyn. We're so glad that you chose to tune in to our channel for this message. We believe that God has a word for you. We hope that you will subscribe to our channel and like us. Now let's go in and hear a great message. There is no God but you. At the cross, you gave your life. Just for me, you died, thank God. Lord, I do honor you and I do thank you, thank God. For what you have done at the cross should have been me, thank God. But you took it upon yourself. Died on that cross. That I may live, thank God, in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, continue to fall afresh, thank God, in the name of Jesus. Touch your manservant, thank God. Touch my mouth, touch my tongue. Let the Holy Spirit speak, thank God, in the name of Jesus. Those who are listening, thank God, will hear your word and will receive your word, thank God. Someone will cry out, I yield to you. Someone will give their lives to you, they got. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because it all started at the cross. So we thank you, they got. And we praise you, they got. And we honor you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Oh, glory to God. Give God some praise. Wherever you are. You need to give him some praise. Amen, amen. Give it on to God, the Savior of my life. Give it on to my pastor and first lady. Thank God for them. The work that they are doing, giving God to the saints. And giving God to my wife. Thank God for my wife. All the work that she's doing in the background. And if you're listening, I know you're listening, Cheryl. I love you. Thank God for you. Amen, amen. It's good to have a good wife who understands. You know, sometimes I may get on her nerves and she may get on my nerves, but it's good to have a good wife that understands. Amen, amen. Well, I have a word for you from the Lord. I was preparing uh, another word and uh, throughout the past weeks. But something happened. The Holy Spirit said, not now. He said, not this word yet. There's another word I want you to give. And so, in Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 22 to 23, it says, if a man has committed a sin worthy of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his corpse shall not hang all night on the tree. But you shall surely bury him on the same day. For he who is hung is a curse of God. For he who is hung is a curse of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus the altar and furniture of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, glory to God. I like to use for a subject, the cross. The cross. The cross has the final word. Amen, the cross. No one enjoys experience pain. No one. No one likes pain. Rather, it is physical, emotional, financial, or relational suffering. We generally try to avoid the situation and circumstances that cause us heartaches. Amen. In fact, 
Some of you may be experiencing a time of difficulty right now and wish you could escape it. But I want you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone. I'm talking about the cross. I'm talking about the cross as the final word. Our Lord and Savior choose to endure the cross for our salvation. Think about it. Crucifixion was the most horrible, despicable way a person could die. It was agonizingly slow extremely humiliating and terribly painful. Traitors and offenders were put on display to dissuade others from committing similar crimes or rebellion against the ruling authority. But Jesus, who did not commit a crime, when about doing good, healing the sick, raising the dead, causing the blind to see, the lame to walk, was hung on a tree as a criminal. Our Lord and Savior took it upon himself our sins on that cross. Amen. We are not certain when the sentence of crucifixion originated. Though it was reportedly practiced in the 6th century B.C., when King Darius I of Persia used it to punish his enemies in Babylon. It was an effective deterrent against insurrection that we find that it was utilized by the Greeks and was eventually handed down to the Romans. However, the Romans found it so abhorred and crude and dehumanizing, they declared it unlawful for their own citizens to be sentenced to death on the cross. Only non Romans could be executed in such a severe and horrifying way. I'm talking about the cross. Consider this truth. Hear this for a minute. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, chose to become a curse so that he could remove the penalty of our sins from us. Jesus chooses. He took all of our filth, all of our sin upon himself and nailed it to the cross. You and I should have died, but our Lord and Savior loved us so much that he took it upon himself and nailed it to the cross. Oh, glory to God. And so he died in excruciating pain. Amen. He preferred to suffer. Listen very carefully. He preferred to suffer in such an extreme way to die and excruciate in death among the worst criminals of Rome than to be separated from you and I for all eternity. Took it upon himself. So when you think about what he went through, it should make you worship him all the more. Oh, glory to God. What an awesome and loving Savior we serve. Our Lord and Savior himself took it upon himself on that cruel rugged cross. Crucifixion. Think about it. Your sin and my sin all the sins we have committed, took it upon himself. And you may be wondering, why did our redemption have to be so difficult and painful? Why did it have to be so difficult and painful? 
Why did God choose crucifixion as the means by which to save us? And why does he call you and I to share the suffering of Christ? Why? First Peter 4.13 tells us, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceedingly joy. Rejoice! You see, our suffering means fellowship with Christ. That's why we should rejoice. Our suffering means fellowship with Christ. To suffer with Christ and be treated by the world the way it treated him is an honor and a privilege. Oh, glory to God. It's an honor and a privilege. Suffering with Christ is a gift from God. What you saying, preacher? You saying suffering from Christ is a gift from God? What are you talking about? Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 says, For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ." Not only to believe on him, but also to suffer with him. Also to suffer for him. Uh, Philippians 3.10 says, uh, I want to know Christ, oh glory to God, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sharing in his suffering. I want to know Christ. Why? Because I want to share in his suffering. Becoming like him on his death. I want to know him. That's why. That's why a, a suffering for Christ is a gift from God. Amen. So three things I just want to bring out to you. The first one is, it is through the cross that the Lord exhibits his justice. It is through the cross that the Lord exhibits his justice. You see, God is holy. He always does the right thing. Amen. When we act outside of his will and violate his commands, we sin and separate ourselves from a holy God. And not only that, we will die and we have not committed our lives to him. Sadly, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, it says, de declares the penalty for our transgression. The person who sins will die. That's the word of God. And I know people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth of the word of God. The person who sins will die. Amen. The worst part is that we can't undo our sins or make ourselves holy. We can't do that. Because of this, God decided to take our judgment upon himself. Amen. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Choose the cross, becoming the perfect substitute for our sin and giving us his righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. God wasn't merely dealing with our actions on the cross. Hear this. He wasn't merely dealing with our actions on the cross. He was also changing our very nature, our very character, to be just like him. Amen. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we become new people, transformed and reconciled to him forever. Amen. Talking about the cross. Glory to God. Second, it is through the cross that the Father displayed his wisdom. The Father 
display his wisdom. Paul writes, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. You see, people make a fatal mistake when they try to save themselves by doing good works. Fatal mistake. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing good works. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with doing good works. Even even the devil can do good works. Nothing wrong with doing good works. But when you think you can be saved and go to heaven just by doing good works, or you're lost. You're missing the point. Because they deceive themselves into thinking that sin is really not so bad. Thinking that sin is really not so bad. Oh, I just sin a little bit. You know how people say, well, you can give a little white lie. There ain't nothing wrong with a little white lie. Sin is sin. No matter who it's in. There's no such thing as a little white lie, a little black lie. A lie is a lie is a lie is a lie. And that's sin. Amen. And so we have to look at this. And so they make that fatal mistake by deceiving themselves. But on the cross, we see the terrible penalty of our sins and that Christ bore all of it for us. A person who believes that working for salvation is never certain. They are never certain whether he or she will have eternal life or not. Yet God has provided for us in such a remarkable way that we can have eternal life in him. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Talking about the cross. Glory to God. Third, it is through the cross that God expressed his love for us. Paul testifies in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 through 5. God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. When we view the cross, we see how greatly the Father cares for us. When you look at it, how Jesus loves us, how he cares for us. Jesus held nothing back, but gave everything to forgive us and have us with him throughout all eternity. He held nothing back. Glory to God. God accepts us forever, unconditionally. But you have to make a commitment to Christ. You have to give your life to him. Amen. Finally, it is through the cross that our Redeemer demonstrated his awesome power. Amen. It doesn't matter who we are or how badly we've sinned. Let me say that again. It doesn't matter who we are or how badly we have sinned. And some of you may say, man, I am the worst of sinners. God can't save me for the sins I have committed, for the sins I have done. Let me tell you something. That is a mistake. The devil wants you to believe that. But God can save you. God can change you. God can transform you. Amen. If you totally surrender to him. God can do it. Christ's death on the cross is not only able to remove the penalty of our transgressions, it is also able to set us absolutely free from their control. Amen. Glory to God. 
on the cross, we have proof of God's mighty power over sin and death. And through it, we are permanently pardoned forever. When you give your life to Christ. But we also know that the one who overcame the grave is able to help us in every trial we experience. He's able to help us. No matter what you're going through, God is able to help us in every situation. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, glory to God. The cross has the final word. It is the cross. So why did Jesus choose the cross? And I'm winding up now. Why did Jesus choose the cross? Simply because through it, he makes your salvation possible, reveals his plans to your heart, draws you near to him, and keeps you secure for all eternity. That's why he chose the cross. The message of the cross is that the justice, wisdom, love, and power of God has given you and I the victory over sin and death so that you can have eternal life. Amen. Therefore, remember all that he's done for you. When you do, no matter what's going on, focus. Focus on what the Savior provided for you. God has made a way. The cross will make all the difference. So I'd like to present to you the cross. Those of you who don't know Christ, God, can change your life even now, right where you are. The Bible says that in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody. That somebody wants a change of heart. Somebody wants to change your life. And all you got to do is commit your life to Christ. And God can change you. God can make you a new person. But you have to come to him. You have to commit your life to him. And you don't have to use any fancy words. Prayer is simply talking to God. What's on your heart? Just talk to him. Wherever you are, just talk to him. God, Lord, forgive me. I have sinned against heaven and thee. I have committed a lot of sins. Lord, forgive me. Believe me. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. God is talking to us. He's talking to you and I. And we have to trust him. We have to believe in him. I'm going to ask that you bow your heads. As I pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you for those who don't know you, they got. I come to you for that person who's on his knees, thank God. That person who's in the bed, thank God. And Lord, he has heard your word. Father God, I ask you, God, 
that you will receive them to God as they commit their lives to you. That they give themselves to you to God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, you don't want anyone to perish. But that everyone would have eternal life. And so I pray for that, that boy, that girl, that mother, that father, that son, that daughter, that God, that grandmother who's coming to you right now and asking for forgiveness of sin. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for what you're doing and what you're doing even now and how you're touching even now. The violence of sin can come to you and cry out, I yield to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your compassion. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, I give you honor, and I give you glory. In Jesus' precious name. I hope you enjoyed that message, and I hope that you will like and subscribe to this channel. If you want to experience a live service, be with us at this same channel next week on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Until next time, God bless you.